TV. Today we are joined by Benjamin J. Trapayan Hoare, who received his AA and BS in Biology, Neuroscience and Philosophy and completed Neuroimaging Fellowships at the University of Pennsylvania. Hi Benjamin, thank you for talking to us today. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. So today's topic is Neuroscience. What are the two parts of the nervous system? Uh, biologically speaking, the nervous system is categorized into the central nervous system, which it itself is composed of the brain and the attached spinal cord. And the second component of the nervous system is everything excluding the brain and the spinal cord, which is titled as the peripheral nervous system. What are the basic questions addressed in molecular neuroscience? Um, in the current day and age, molecular neuroscience is beginning to probe a variety of questions which pertain to brain health, um, neurodevelopment, and neurodegeneration. Uh, the connection between neuroengineering and molecular neuroscience is allowing neuroscientists, physicians, clinicians, and biomedical engineers to probe um, the microscopic level and the synaptic interconnections between neurons within the brain. That thereby allows us to then invent and implement new neurotherapeutic interventions, um, such as chemotherapeutic drugs, which act on those very synapses. So molecularly, we're trying to be able to dissect what the cells are actually doing on a molecular level, and how that translates into physiological and perhaps even anatomical function and structure. How are neural circuits formed and used anatomically and physiologically? So the concept of uh, neuronal circuits um, was developed by um, a scientist by the name of Dr. Hebb and um, within the field of neuroscience and adjacent and corresponding fields, Hebb's rule suggests that neurons which fire together are wired together. Um, in practical terms, that means that as a human being, as an organism, um, begins to utilize a certain section of the brain for a particular um, execution, those neurons begin to learn how to develop in a circuit and as a team together, and de they develop that specific function. Thus, when Hebb said that neurons which fire together are wired together, he meant that when an individual executes a particular function, for example, speaking, movement, hand motions, or emotions, those neurons which are responsible on the subatomic level for those actions begin to develop what we call a neuronal circuit. And through biomedical imaging, we can actually see these neurons firing together, firing in the sense of releasing the neurotransmitters, which are thereby responsible for the executed function on the anatomical and phenotypic level. How are human cognition and emotional mapped to specific neutral substrates? So the way in which we've developed this um, is mostly attributed to the neurosurgeon by the name of Dr. William Penfield. He thereby developed what we know as the homunculus. The homunculus is a map of the outer cortex and its underlying pinnings of the brain, which correspond to specific functions within the body. For example, moving the leg or moving an arm or moving your tongue and these sorts of um, motor movements, those are attributed to specific arenas of the brain. Now, the way that Dr. Penfield and others after him developed which, which areas of the brain are attributed to certain functions of the human body is by A, um, visualizing and demonstrating from patients who have damaged brain regions from either degeneration or stroke, B, they've used in ancient times lobotomy, and C, through ablation. What these three techniques basically illustrate is that when we take away a certain section of the brain, 
were thereby able to see what that section of the brain was responsible for. Or, for example, if a stroke damaged a certain section of the brain, we can then see that when this section of the brain is damaged, X part of the body doesn't function, and we can then correlate those two. And over the years, through the scientific literature, we've developed a map of the brain through this, and we've called it the homunculus. Many thanks to Benjamin J. Kushayamukor, the shortages today at Asimov TV. My pleasure.